Hello everyone. Welcome to Studio Free Press Matters. I am Anu Netar and I will be your host for today. During Studio Free Press Matters, we talk about the work that we do with more than 90 local media partners worldwide to promote and defend press freedom and access to reliable information to everyone. Today we will talk about the situation in Belarus where press freedom and independent media are under heavy attacks by the Lukashenko regime. To talk about this, we have with us program coordinator of Eurasia, Maria Sadowskaya Komlach, and we have a special guest with us today, Hana Yahorova, who is the director of United Mass Media in Belarus. Maria, let's start with you. It has been a little over a year since the presidential elections took place in 2020, which was followed by peaceful protests, which was met by violent suppression by the regime. Suddenly all eyes of the world was on Belarus. A lot has happened since then. The press freedom has deteriorated. You have worked in the region for many years now. Did you see the turn of events coming? Were there any in- intuitions? Um, well, I know yes and no. Of course, everyone expected the presidential election in Belarus to be uh quite violent towards press towards protesters because this is what was happening every time since 2001 when people tried to demand uh, free and fair elections but usually in previous years uh there were just uh, maybe short periods of repressions where the websites would be blocked but then unblocked or where a journalist would be put into jail but released uh, fairly quickly what has happened and what is happening since 2020 is that the wave of repression against journalists and independent media has not stopped and moreover it increases with every month while as you probably noticed the world is already busy with many other crises and it's not in news anymore that journalists get into jail in Belarus. Let's move to Hana now. Hana, could you sketch the current situation uh, of Belarus for us? Hana's organization works on the ground in Belarus. I just want to add that um it was a double crisis, even like triple crisis in Belarus. Of course, we also faced uh, the global COVID pandemic and it's also combined with our political crackdown on independent media in Belarus and since i'm working with a regional association of uh, uh newspaper publishers uh we really suffer a lot and we still f- uh face um unprecedented and even existential challenges for us in our work and uh, um now we can see even regarding our organization that seven out of 15 printed newspapers stopped um to produce paper version and the big amount of our websites uh was blocked and still blocked in Belarus so we couldn't really continue working in a normal way uh how we used to work before um last year election campaign Anna could you tell us how you and your organization tried to help them um we do a lot of efforts to continue our work and unfortunately we forced to um continue working outside of Belarus and uh, right now our office is uh working from Lithuania from Vilnius and also from from Warsaw from Poland uh we still continue remote work and uh, taking in mind that majority of our members are still in inside Belarus they decided not to uh emigrate at least for now and they try to keep uh, editorial offices inside the country what do you think is most needed for these media outlets to continue their work um i think first you can say about solidarity uh, it's very important for them to feel that the world is still thinking about us and they know what is going on the situation is not became better it's i could say it's worse and worse day by day so uh uh i hope belarus will be still on their like newspapers uh pages and in the global agenda so i would say uh we need uh, like as i as i told before strong solidarity and uh, support each other in this hard time 
to overcome and to be able to return to Belarus and continue our mission there. Thank you, Anna. Maria, you have been in close contact with independent media and press freedom organizations in Belarus. You work alongside your team to support them to stay in business, to stay safe. What is Free Press doing to support these independent media in Belarus? I think, uh, as you already heard from Hanna, uh, a very inspiring part of what is happening is that media and journalists and uh, editors do not give up. They themselves inspire us to look for ways to support them. So Hanna mentioned solidarity. Solidarity is important when people in Europe and all over the world know what is happening inside the country. So Free Press Unlimited is coordinating more than 35 media organizations, meaning media support or freedom of expression related organizations around Belarusian theme in order for us to plan certain joint actions, joint statements, or sometimes provide urgent financial assistance either for people inside Belarus or for those who had to move out. Secondary, we have uh, been consulting a new fundraising civic campaign, Media Solidarity Campaign Belarus, in order to help them provide even quicker assistance, uh, uh, for example, relocation packages or psychosocial support to journalists both inside and outside Belarus. And here we base a lot on the Reporters Respond program that Free Press and Limit runs globally. We get expertise from our colleagues, but we also complement them because Reporters Respond Respond is a global program, while Belarus, of course, is only one of many countries, unfortunately, where press freedoms are violated. Last but not least, we're also part of this initiative to create co-working spaces, which Hannah mentioned, one in Białystok, one in Warsaw. And uh, this is an interesting idea because, of course, many people would say, oh, you're just creating something for people in exile. Uh, how does it, uh, how is it relevant to people inside the country? But we hope that when the travel limitations will be gone or relaxed, people would actually come from Belarus and back and be able to keep this connection, to keep this bridge with their counterparts and also Polish, Ukrainian, Lithuanian, Latvian journalists to jointly think about creative solutions on how to operate in the conditions of restrictive press freedom. It's very good to hear. Maria, you not only work in Belarus, but in all of Eurasia. How have the events that have taken place in Belarus affected other countries in the region? The effect has been multifold. In Russia, for example, we can see that the government of Russia decided first to support the Belarusian regime in its oppression and now kind of continues this very hard line against its own civil society and against its own media outlets. We just heard yesterday that 22 reporters working for two human rights related media outlets over the Info and Media Zona have been considered foreign agents in Russia and they have to submit ridiculous reporting and also mark every their personal social media post with the special marker that they're foreign agents. So it seems that the Russian government has aligned with the Belarusian one in the line of repression and hard line uh, stance towards the media. But other countries in the region, let's say uh, Ukraine and Georgia especially, uh, became um, uh, began uh, serving a new role, a role of host countries for dozens and sometimes hundreds of uh, Belarusian activists, but also journalists. And this is also an example for them. On the one hand, they provide a lot of safety shelters and safe havens for journalists. Their civil society is working great. On the other hand, the uh, beatings and killings of uh, a cameraman uh, during who covered the gay pride in uh, Georgia, or uh, the situation with uh, the uh, some somehow unresolved uh, case of uh, murder or suicide of the Belarusian diaspora activist in Kiev. This all sent signals to the Belarusian media actors that it might not be the safest space for them to stay in this 
these countries. So I think the governments of these countries should still do homework, including the investigation of the murder of Pavel Sheremet, a Belarusian journalist who was blown up in Kiev uh, five years ago, and we still don't know who did it or who ordered it, in order to really demonstrate to uh, the Belarusian journalists who are forced out of the country that it is safe to stay there long term. The European Union members, on the other hand, especially uh, bordering states, I think made a very bold and courageous step to become second houses, second homes, not only for journalists, but for political activists and for former presidential candidates, Vitlana Tihanovska. Hanna, what is the general spirit of the journalists and the public in Belarus? Do you think they still have the strength left in them to stand up against the regime? Um, I truly believe that we have a very strong potential. And uh, of course, uh, we work in a very hostile and stressful um, environment conditions, but we still have the strengths. And I really believe that a majority of journalists who you should understand it's not very easy to stay uh, and continue working as a journalist inside a country. I can say about our editor offices, many journalists um, became freelancers. Why? Because we don't have um, enough um, resources, financial resources to pay like official salaries. Uh, when your website and your uh, printed version is, is like stopped, blocked, you couldn't uh, have like official income so you need to uh, fire your your um, employers you need to um, fire your journalists uh, people are quite active and still have this positive energy to continue fulfill journalistic obligations on place so um, maybe not all my colleagues so optimistic as I am but I truly believe that we will be able to uh, preserve our potential. And then when Belarus will be more free and we'll be able to go to real changes and reforms, um, journalistic on place in Belarus will be still strong and efficient. Anna, lastly, all the attention of the world on what is happening in Belarus at the moment might fade away in a year. Why is it so important for the world to not look away? Thank you for the very good and relevant question. I also asking myself, and uh, you know what? Belarus is like, a, um, like Maria already said, it's not only about Belarus, it's for the Eurasia, it's, it's for neighboring countries. As example, how the situation could be changed for worse so rapidly. And if the world will just ignore Belarusian case, the situation could be the same in many, many countries nearby and uh, even, even in other, on other continents. So it's just a very good example how the authoritarian regime could be very rapidly, quickly changed into the, you know, no career scenario uh, of the very strong uh, dictatorship. So to avoid it globally, I truly believe that international attention to Belarusian situation should be strong and evident. Thank you, Hanna, for joining us and sharing your experiences with us. Maria, before we close off, would you like to make some final comments? I'd like to say that some seemingly exotic issues like uh, one country dictatorship actually are now interconnected so much with the rest of the world. And this has been demonstrated through uh, Belarusian diasporas all over the world actually uniting to support Belarusian independent media. I believe there is a place and moment for us living abroad to uh, be in contact with these diasporas, to check with them how we can help more uh, journalists and media in Belarus. And of course, here at Free Press Unlimited, we're also at service of everyone who would like to know more and deeper about what's going on there and uh, how to help practically. Thank you, Maria, for, for these wonderful comments and also for your time for this interview. And good luck with everything you're doing with your team. Thank you, and thank you to everyone who is watching that. Share it with your friends and stay in touch. And thank you all for watching.
I hope to see you next time at Studio Free Press Matters. If you would like to stay updated about our work, please follow us on our social media and also subscribe to our YouTube channel.